Hi everyone and welcome back to Newegg TV. My name is Paul and today I'm going to be doing an unboxing and overview of this brand new motherboard from ASRock. This is the ASRock Z87 Extreme 6. We'll start off with a closer look at the retail box. Not a whole lot by way of actual specifications here up front, but we do have some logos down here in the bottom left. This is a Z87 chipset based motherboard, so it is uh, suitable for Intel's fourth generation core processors. Uh, those are previously known as codename Haswell. They're socket 1150, and bear in mind this motherboard is not backwards compatible with socket 1155 processors. So no standy bridge, no AV bridge on this one. It does support AMD's Crossfire uh, technology as well as NVIDIA's SLI technology for using multiple video cards. Windows 8 ready, you also get HDMI and DTS Connect built in. Uh, here's some specs on the box. I'm going to start right up here on the top because we do have some nice call-out features here. For instance, uh, Azurac, I'm sorry, yes, Azurac has built in a HDMI input, so you can actually use that as a pass-through, so you can connect other devices to the computer to be able to switch back and forth between them, so that's a nice little add-on. We also have Intel Ethernet that uh, supports Wake on LAN functionality, so you can use that. Uh, so if you're remote, you're on the go using a, a laptop or a smartphone, for example, you can dial back into your home computer to access your files and other data. You also have Purity Sound, and that is the integration of both the Realtek ALC 1150 uh, audio codec chip, uh, which features 115 decibel signal to, no to noise ratio, as well as an integrated hardware amplifier that will allow you to uh, provide excellent bass, less sound distortion, more sound detail, and supports up to 600 ohm impedance headphones, which is a very, very nice feature. You typically don't see that uh, outside of discrete level graphics cards. So for power, we have premium gold long lifespan capacitors. We also have digital power delivery, a 12-phase power delivery design for your VRMs, and they also are using dual stack MOSFETs. We have Intel dual LAN, so two Intel NICs uh, that does support teaming. You get 4K uh, resolution out of the uh, HDMI on the integrated, uh, for the integrated GPU, I should say. You get ASRock A tuning, which you can use to give yourself an automatic overclock. It does support triple monitor uh, on your iGPU from your Haswell processor, so you can do three uh, display outputs, distortion-free slots, specialty design slots for your memory. Also, you get a front USB 3.0 panel, XFast 555, which is talking about the um, software acceleration for your RAM, LAN, and your USB. Also, ASRock's fan configuration utility, which they have dubbed Fantastic. You also get easy driver installation, and finally, you get the ability to uh, have a USB key that you can plug in to log you into Windows. Inside the retail box, we have some accessories, which I shall show to you all. First, we'll start with this mysterious thing, which is packaged with tape. That's all right. This is an SLI bridge, I promise. Okay, SLI bridge for starters. You do have a two-way SLI support for this. So they've given you a rigid PCB version of the SLI bridge. That should keep your cards well supported. Let's talk about serial ATA. They've given you a total of six serial ATA cables. Uh, you get three of them that will have straight plugs on both ends and three more that will have a straight plug on one end and a 90 degree angle plug on the other. They're all SATA revision 1, 2, or 3 compatible. They have the little clasps on the ends to hold them in place and they're all black. You also have a motherboard input-output shield right there, uh, which is, has a black, gra back, black background and is color-coded to tell you which connector is which. Here is documentation, which I will finish with, uh, but you do also have that front panel USB 3.0 uh, adapter, so that gives you a 3.5 inch bay USB 3.0 uh, with a little cable that goes back to the 20 pin uh, motherboard connector so you can plug that in to enable those. Also they provided a 2.5 inch drive mount on top of that so you could drop in an SSD for example and uh, not be wasting your entire 3.5 inch slot. You also get a bracket here so if you do not want to put that in the front of your computer you can simply un unscrew it, uh, attach it to that and attach it to the back of your computer. Here is your primary motherboard manual and quick installation guide, so definitely recommend keeping this on hand while you're doing your build. You have a layout of the motherboard right there, as well as important stuff such as all of the included uh, components that are integrated onto the motherboard. Here's your driver disk, uh, which includes a driver disk as well as a powered by ASRock uh, case badge. If you want to pop that on your case, I recommend going to the ASRock website to download the latest ASRock drivers. This looks to be an insert. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, ignore this. That's for me, and it will not be included in the actual retail box. <laughs> That's a review sample. Okay, we also have uh, some software uh, setup guides as well, as well as an insert here for uh, setting up that uh, ASRock 
home cloud function that I mentioned with the uh, Intel NIC. Uh, and then this one is for software. So for instance, your extreme, uh, extreme, what is it called? Extreme 6 AC uh, software for DRAM configuration as well as overclocking and all of that good stuff. And here's a look at the motherboard itself. As you can see, Azeroth has gone with a primarily black and silver color scheme. We also have uh, some dark brown there in the PCB itself. Uh, speaking of which, I'll give you guys a quick closer look at the back here so you can get a better idea of the color. Uh, you can see the back plate for your 1150 socket as well as the heat sinks on the board which are attached with Phillips head spring-loaded screws. So not too difficult to remove those if it ever becomes necessary in the future. Looking back at the front of the board, I will point out the uh, fan headers you have. There's a total of six. So you have a couple up here in the top. This is for CPU. You have a four pin main CPU connector as well as a three pin secondary CPU fan connector. Three pin power fan connector over here. A couple three pin chassis fan connectors right here next to each other. And then finally one more four pin PWM uh, fan, control or fan header down there in the lower right hand corner which is where we're going to head right now so I can give you guys a super close up look at this board as well as all the detailed components that are installed. So starting off, of course, you got that four pin PWM capable fan header. Uh, above that, you also have uh, LED and speaker front panel connectors and then right above that, you'll have a clear CMOS jumper. Uh, speaking of the CMOS, you have two BIOS chips right there that are, lo uh, that are loaded on. Uh, you can switch back and forth between those using the surface mounted switch right there from BIOS A to BIOS B. You also have a couple surface mounted power and reset buttons. Uh, so if you're doing an external build, for example, that makes it uh, quite a bit easier to turn your system on or, re or off or reset it. Uh, the rest of your front panel headers are right there. Above and to the left of that, you have a debug LED, which is extremely handy if you're uh, getting your system up and running for the first time and you have any issues at all. Uh, you also have a USB uh, 2.0 a, a style connector right there. So uh, this can be very handle, handy if you have, say, for instance, a higher end workstation configuration that you're setting up and uh, you have software that actually requires a hardware dongle. Those can often be quite expensive. So you can connect it here inside your case and that will help prevent it from being stolen by ne'er-do-wells. Uh, next to that, on the left, you have a couple USB 2.0 front panel headers. Uh, you also have a USB 3.0 front panel header right there. That's a uh, 20 pins, so that will control a couple USB 3.0 ports. You also have an infrared header for a remote. This is actually uh, a Molex connector, so that is going to provide a bit of extra power to your PCI Express lanes. It is not necessary to plug that in in all configurations, but if you're uh, really maxing out your I.O. and your PCI Express, it's recommended to plug that in to give yourself some extra power. So if you're going for uh, Crossfire X or SLI configuration, for example, you might want to plug that in if you're not seeing uh, your performance hitting what it should be. You also have a COM port right there for serial connection, and uh, you'll also have your front panel uh, audio connectors right there. Speaking of the front panel audio, uh, you have all of your Purity Sound audio components located right here, and you might notice this sort of lighter color line going up the side of the board right there. That's actually a bit of a separation uh, built into the PCB itself. That's going to separate uh, your analog audio componentry on this side from the digital componentry that's uh, to the right. That's going to help reduce interference. Uh, you also have a mag er, I'm sorry, an EMI, or electromagnetic interference uh, shield that's over your uh, sound chip right there. Again, that's a Realtek ALC. Uh, one 1150 uh, audio chip with the 115 decibel signal to noise ratio. Also notice the premium uh, gold capacitors that they've used for the audio components to give you an excellent onboard audio experience. Next, uh, let's move on to the PCI Express. So we have uh, quite a few PCI and PCI Express slots. Uh, you get a single X1 PCI Express slot there at the top. Also for legacy support, you have a couple uh, standard PCI uh, slots right there. So if you have an older device that still connects via PCI, you still have compatibility for that. You also have your uh, full length PCI Express. Uh, these are physically X16 slots. They're actually wired up for X8, I'm sorry, X16, X8, and X4. Now you get 16 PCI Express lanes natively with your Haswell processor and those are going to be split up in different ways depending on what you have connected. So if you're just run, running with a single video card you'll get X8, or I'm sorry, X16 in this top slot right here. 
Uh, if you're going with a two-way configuration, uh, you should use these two slots, and that will give you X8 and X8. Uh, I should also uh, mention that you do have quad SLI or quad Crossfire X support, uh, but you would need dual GPU video cards for both of those slots in order to do that, but that's, of course, another option. Uh, finally, if you do want three-way Crossfire X, you can actually do these three ports, and those will default to uh, X8, X4, and X4, which adds up to 16. Also right in here, you ha actually have a mini PCI Express uh, connector or connection point. Uh, I do want to point out that there is also an Extreme 6AC version of this motherboard available that actually ships uh, with an 802.11 AC capable uh, add-on card that you can drop in right there. Um, you do have the option to add that to this board as well, of course, uh, but the AC version does ship with the uh, Wi-Fi card as well as the uh, antenna that you can route over to your motherboard's I.O. Uh, that about wraps it up for our PCI Express area right there. To the right, of course, you have your ASRock logoed heat sink, and that is over your Z87 chipset. And the Z87 chipset is controlling, well, a lot of things on the board, but uh, one of the featured items is actually a lot of the uh, serial ATA connection points. So you'll notice you have a total of 10 serial ATA. All of these are SATA, serial ATA revision 3 compatible. That means you get SATA 6 gigabits per second throughput. Uh, the six left ones here are natively controlled by the Z87 chipset. So it's recommended uh, for a boot drive, for example, especially if you're going with an SSD. Plug it in right there. Uh, the six on the left do also, uh, through Intel's uh, Z87 chipset, supports RAID configurations of uh, RAID 0, RAID 1, RAID 5, and RAID 10. Also, if you want to take advantage of Intel's smart response technology, you want to use one of those ports. Uh, for additional SATA Rev3 compatibility or, or connection points, you have four more right there. Those are controlled by an Asmedia add-on chip. Um, so uh, no RAID support there, but you do get additional connection points uh, for any other serial ATA connected devices you want to plug in. You also have another USB 3.0 connector right there, as, you'll, as you will note. Uh, again, that's a front panel connector, so 20 pin, and that will support two more uh, USB 3.0 ports for your front panel. Uh, above that, you have your 24 pin main motherboard power connector. And then just to the left of that, you have your DDR3 DIMM slots. Uh, so DDR3 support, of course, uh, it does support up to 32 gigs, so you can go up to eight gigs per DIMM. It's dual channel, so you will want to make sure that you're um, buying your sticks in sets of at least two. You can also buy a four stick set if you want to populate all four DIMMs, uh, and then refer to the motherboard manual, manual to make sure that you're populating the proper DIMMs to take advantage of dual channel configurations. You also have uh, official uh, DDR3 speeds of up to 1600 supported by Intel this time around. And if you're going to be interested in overclocking, which is going to be heavily dependent on your processor, uh, but you can overclock up to DDR3 3000, which is pretty insane. Those are going to be actually very hard to find DIMMs that will do that speed, but it is available. Uh, next to that, you have the 1150 socket. Once again, this is not backwards compatible with socket 1155, so don't try to drop in a Sandy Bridge or an Ivy Bridge uh, CPU in here. They will not work. Uh, you do need a Haswell or fourth generation Intel Core processor for that, um, but it drops in right there. And then you do have uh, an excellent overclocking configuration on this board. So again, 12 channel, I'm sorry, uh, 12 phase power delivery for the CPU. You can see all the uh, at least the chokes for the phases up there at the top. You've got some pretty beefy heat sinks installed on top of that to help keep those components cool if you're going to be doing overclocking. Uh, and yeah, you also still get uh, a nice wide space around the CPU socket for whatever aftermarket cooler you might be installing. Because if you are overclocking, well, chances are you're going to be going with an aftermarket cooler. Uh, finally, you have a 8-pin supplemental CPU power connector up here at the top left. That's it for the front of the board. We're going to finish off with our inputs and outputs over on this side. So uh, starting over here, you have a PS2, uh, PS2 port. That's for a keyboard. So if you do uh, have an expensive mechanical keyboard that supports N-key rollover that's PS2 only, you can still plug that in right there. Also, you have a couple USB 2.0 ports. Uh, so rounding out the I.O. for USB 2.0. Uh, for your actual uh, connectivity for your iGPU, so uh, the Haswell processors do have an integrated GPU uh, that can support three displays. So for display outs, you have uh, the DVI right here. You also have display port, and then you also have HDMI. Uh, next to that, you have an HDMI input. And again, that's uh, using the HDMI pass-through connectivity that we mentioned uh, on the re outside of the retail box. You have an eSATA port right there. Again, that's, con that's controlled by an add-on as media. 
uh, chip that is uh, again SATA Rev 3, 6 gigabits per second compatible. Uh, you get an, a surface or an external, I should say, clear CMOS button right there, so that's very handy to have. Uh, four more USB 3.0 ports right here. There are your dual Intel Gigabit Ethernet connect connectors, RJ45 connectors. Again, that does support teaming. Uh, and then finally, you have your connectors for your audio solution, so you have an optical toss link. Uh, output. You also have your analog outputs and then finally your analog microphone input. And that's going to wrap it up for this video guys. Once again we have been taking a closer look at the ASRock Z87 Extreme 6 featuring the Z87 chipset and the 1150 socket for Intel's fourth generation core processors aka Haswell. I also want to point out that this is also available as the Extreme 6 AC and that will include a 802.11 AC compatible Wi-Fi adapter. I'm Paul with Newegg TV. If you enjoyed today's video be sure to check out our Newegg TV YouTube channel for more just like it. Don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to like the video, and we'll see you all in the next video.